Alright, let's go, part 8. In the last episode, we built a 24S 2P battery pack using Headway 38120 lithium iron phosphate cells, and I went into some detail about the materials I used to build the pack. We built a shelf behind the seat for this battery pack, seeing as it's just too large to fit anywhere else. We also installed some of the larger components, like the 500 amp inline fuse and the contactor. There's a bunch more work to do before we can test this thing out, so let's get into it. First up, we're going to finish the BMS connections to each of the cells in the battery pack. It was just a case of soldering the extensions I had connected earlier onto the loom that came with my daily BMS. Each cable is in a specific order, hence all the labelling. It took a bit of time, but we got there in the end. Now the battery is ready to be connected to the BMS. Sweet, so I've mounted this on the bottom. I've got to join a cable on the end of these. These are the P minus, and it's going to go through that channel there so you can see a little nice little gap all the way through uh, follow these along here and it's got to connect to B minus there um, and then these ones are going to make a little jump cable to get onto the battery minus that'd be pretty damn close but yeah that's all good so that's one good thing about having the battery shelf made out of wood, we can just make holes for cabling really easily and fixing things like the battery housing to it is a breeze as well. For the housing I was just able to use some wood screws, then I put a piece of dense stick on foam in the base for isolation and mechanical protection for the batteries. That's in flat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah perfect. that's pretty close. Huh. Yeah, that's all good. Okay, so with the battery in place and the BMS mounted underneath it, I can pass the BMS loom through one of the holes we made and Jace can connect it up. We put some split conduit on to keep the wires tidy and add some protection. Definitely don't want to short any of those out. Might be a little hard to see, but this is where the cabling gets plugged in. The BMS I bought also came with a couple of extras, like a battery status indicator and a Bluetooth module for communication with a phone app. Okay, now we can start with some more wiring. This is the battery negative connection, which goes through the BMS before going to the controller B-. Unfortunately, the cables from the BMS were just a bit short to reach the terminal, but a short high capacity jump cable sorted this out. Next up, I installed a flyback diode on the coil of the contactor. If you're new to electronics, this diode is used to suppress back EMF, which is a spike in voltage caused by a collapsing magnetic field. Basically all it does is protect the driving circuitry in the controller. Another component we have to install is a pre-charge resistor. This one's pretty simple as well, it basically allows a small amount of current to bypass the contactor so that any large capacitors in the controller can charge up before the contactor is closed. This prevents any big arcs from inrush current when closing the contactor. This is the electronic throttle, it has a micro switch with normally open and normally closed connections. We're going to use the normally open connections. It also has a throttle position potentiometer. Once again, I'm just using some split conduit to help protect the cables and keep everything tidy. I've installed another one of these electronic throttles on the brake side. This will be useful to detect braking and brake position when we get into regen. I've used some little L brackets to attach it to the brake booster bracket. Now we need a way to charge the go-kart and for that I bought an 87.6 volt charger that's supposed to be able to charge at 15 amps. Then I used a 240 volt appliance socket as that was what suited the cabling on the charger and I just installed this in the battery shelf. Got the charger on for now, it's a bit how you going with a long cable, uh, it'll be better when it sits on the ground. But uh, uh, no current. Ow, what? This was saying 15 before. Yeah, oh, come on. Turns out the batteries were almost fully charged, but there you go, charging at just over 40 amps. Not too bad. I think last little thing was soldering this pin on J1 of the controller. 
I've done a quick wiring of everything for testing. Let's take a look. All right, that's the wiring pretty much complete. Uh, I'll try to quickly explain on the brake side. Um, all we're using at the moment is the micro switch and that's coming at uh, with the return and this one which says brake switch. Um, on the accelerator side we're using same thing, micro switch and the 5k position, so 0 to 5k uh, throttle position. Um, so that's micro switch and a return, uh, which is one of these ones. And then we've got the uh, throttle and return as well. So uh, there we go, to return. Uh, next one, we've got power input. Um, that same connection is also going back uh, through here to uh, this side of the contactor. Um, the other side of the contactor, so this side, uh, is grounded through this pin, which is pin 3 of J1. Uh, and I think that's it. Um, I forgot to mention the power. I've also run through a uh, toggle switch, which is um, off and on. Uh, and that also has a fuse. I did buy a fuse holder for this, but I've lost it somewhere. So uh, this is what we've got for now. Last bit of cabling, we can connect the positive battery connection. Let's try a first power on. Alright, ready? There you go, and that's the way. Well sweet, we've got power but nothing was set up in the controller yet. So this programmable section could be a whole video in itself, let's just skip it for now. Awesome, let's give it a test. How the brakes work alright? Yeah. No grip on the front at all. I've got enough air, baby. Where, where do you want me to go? Anywhere, bro. Just have a turn. Let's go try it out. Oh. Yeah? That is, oh, 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 bro. It's it's far too light at the front that you can hardly turn it. Oh, really? Like, like you need, we need to change this for some of grip. Yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe when they're warmed up a bit better, but the acceleration is brutal. Yeah? Yeah, bro. Oh, Do you want me to show you? No, 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 no. Let me set up first. Yep. Oh, no, hang on. Go easy on it. No, bro. 
No. Once I had the brake on, bro. Yeah. Oh, I've got a red flashing light here. Oh, okay. Hang on. Okay, so Turn this little issue we're having here is because he has the brake activated at the same time as the throttle because there's a slight hill here. In the settings, it's just a Green. tick box to turn it off. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> Holy shit. This is obviously not the brightest place to test this cart, so we took it at night to a new subdivision that's being built where pretty much no one lives here. We strapped a headlight to the front of it so we could see where we were going. Alright, let's try a launch from dead still position. Let's see if we can do some skids. So the donut, bro. We out. <laughs> Absolutely stoked, man. This thing is so fast. That was it. Mean? Yeah, bro. So little things that went wrong during the run, lost uh, lost that bolt out of there, and also this little charge cable that I made up um, broke off. So just making one with a little bit more length on it, so it's not so tight. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Otherwise, it went all well. We had a lot of trouble finding somewhere we could hit top speed, but we did find this cool spot near the inlet, and we gave it a go. Logan, who's helped me out heaps with some of the fabrication over this whole series, had a go on it too. Unfortunately, there are a lot of low points on this road and the frame of the car bashes the ground if you go too fast. Top speed so far is 75 kilometers an hour, but I'm sure there's more in it, especially if we change the sprocket ratio. We've beaten the last setup in terms of top speed by a small margin, but here is where it really outshines it. Hey, it's a bit small. Fun as that was, we damaged the back rim a little doing that. Woo. Bit close. That could have been dangerous, eh? Oh well. Then after fixing it and coming back a second time, we had this close call. Lucky, bro. I don't think we'll be completing any more testing in a public area from now on. Lucky, bro. It's about hit me. Well, that's where we'll leave it for now. Next time, I want to try this on an actual go-kart track, which will be a little bit challenging to set up, but hopefully I can get it done. I want to get a little more technical as well and discuss some of the features of the controller and BMS and look at how the system is performing. We also have regen on the horizon too. 
As always, thanks heaps for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.